On this week's episode of Speedway the Inside Dirt, we're at the Robertson Holden International Speedway for full coverage of the machinery specialist Komatsu New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. We chat with the defending champion Scott Joblin, a man looking to complete the Grand Slam in Peter Rees, and the 1979 Grand Prix winner, that's right, 40 years ago, Clive Elliott, and the man from the bay, Mike Wilson, keeps you up to date throughout the race meeting from Pitside. This is going to be a big one. So, let's get into it. Well, if you've ever wondered what millions of dollars worth of race cars look like, this is it. Have a look down the alleyway here. Superstocks everywhere here at Robertson Holden International Speedway. It is the Superstock Grand Prix for 2019. We're going to go and have a look at some of the cars, talk to some of the drivers, just see what's going on, what the buzz is down here in the pits. But I tell you, you can already feel the atmosphere. It's pretty electric. Just see what's going on with the New Zealand champion right now. Just looking around to see if Jace is about. But let's have a look at the 1NZ car. Not this cool looking 1NZ, let's look at the real 1NZ car. Look at the work that goes into these race cars now, the super stocks. The standard just continues to get better and better. They are true hot rods. Pete just hanging over the back here as we have a look at the 2NZ car. That's warming up at the moment. I talked, to, uh, I talked to Pete early on about this. I said, what's that? I've never seen that on your car before. He said, it's because now we've cut away the panel and you can see it. But that's where the oil goes, about 10 litres of oil that circulates through there. It's real hard to keep temperature down in these race cars and that's certainly an innovation that helps. Pete, I know you're busy still. We're on camera at the moment. You've got a race tape, just those last minute preparations. I've got to say it, an illustrious career, but you've never won the GP. Nah, someone else told me that today. Is that a monkey you really want to get off your back? Oh, it would be nice, but uh, it's not the end of the world, is it? Well, it would complete the set for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, yeah, yeah. I think it would mean a whole lot more to others than me, but, you know, a, a win would be good. Well, Asher actually said, I hope the old man bloody wins it, because then he can bugger off and retire. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the boys. <laughs> A little bit of the inside dirt track talk this time. I'll tell you one thing tonight at the Superstock GP, this is going to get used plenty. Solid concrete. It's the contact that we like to see in Superstock racing. But now if we look out onto this racetrack, there was a, a little hint of rain supposed to be coming today. Apparently, maybe not. Plenty of moisture still going down on this track and there's a lot of prep work being done now as they tyre pack it. We can see out here just how sticky that clay is. Look at that as I work my finger into the sticky clay. That's why these cars have got such soft Hoosier tyres on there. They're going to bite into this dirt and we're going to see some fast racing here in our super stock class. Still putting water down on the outside of the track to keep it nice and even but this racetrack here at Robertson Holden International Speedway is looking dynamite. And I'm standing right here with the defending champion Scotty Joblin. Big night. Yeah, no, it's going to be a big night, especially running it all on one night. So, um, yeah, it's good to good to get a get started for the season. So um, we'll just be out there giving it our best. You won this title last year in Nelson, back here, pretty much on home turf. Is that going to work in your favour? You think? Oh, nah, he runs pretty quick here. I think so. Um, probably not, but we've done a few laps around here. So uh, just hopefully everything's all good on the car, and uh, we're straight into it tonight. So we should be right. Joblin boys have got a unique slice of history in this championship because you've all won it, both you, Simon, Adam. Yeah, no, that was, uh, well, I probably never really thought about that, but I guess you're right. So uh, it was good to get a title last year, so hopefully we can uh, just try and continue some uh, a good run uh, this season. How's Team Joblin started the season? Have you guys then done many meetings? Uh, no, we just, this is the first meeting, we just finished the cars last night, so uh, just probably the way we roll, but normally late starters, but... We definitely uh, didn't want to miss these championships. Tom, this is a meeting that you won a couple of years ago. Yeah, back uh, oh, two years ago in Rotorua. Yeah, had a pretty good run and managed to get the win, so keen to go pretty hard tonight and yeah, see where we end up. I know the 87 Hot Rod's on good form. You won the Tony Mack at Miani last week. Yeah, yeah, had a good run at home. There, it wasn't a busy night. There wasn't heaps of cars there, but uh, it was still with some good quick cars and yeah, no, we had a pretty good run there, so we're pretty happy. You can't put your money on a winner here tonight, and I hope it's a Hawks Bay car, I really do, but there's so much talent. 
Yeah, and it's getting like that every year. It's even stepping up even more every year. You know, you used to be able to throw a blank over the top 20, and now it's the top sort of 80. So, yeah, so it's good though. It's good for the class. And, you know, yeah. and you've got a legend like Peter Rees who's never won it. Oh, isn't he? Or is he not? Oh, it must be the only thing he just about hasn't won, but yeah, he'll be, he'll be going good things tonight. So. We're going to go and actually talk to a guy that won this crown, wait for it, 40 years ago. Clive Elliott, come with me. Clive, good to see you. There you are. Now, you hold one of the most amazing statistics at this meeting. Do you know what I'm going to say? The oldest driver. <laughs> well, besides that one, you won this title 40 years ago. And I hope to do it again today. Hey, everything's possible in Superstocks. Do you remember that night 40 years ago? Yeah, I do, actually. I was actually lucky to get into the, um, into the race itself because Barry Featherston put me into a parked car bent my bumper onto the wheel, so he cut the corner of the bumper off, and I had to go on the rapid charge. So run the rapid charge, then run the Grand Prix. How, how does fitness work for you this late into your career? Um, do you get tired during the racing now, or are you just you're still zoned in? No, I don't get tired. I still do 40 hours a week, panel reading. That's the only fitness I do. That's a pretty physical job. Yeah. Years ago, I used to run marathons and do karate and all that bullshit. So. You're already a legend in super stocks, mate, but if you were able to step on the top step tonight, 40 years apart, what a night that would be. What would you celebrate with? Bourbons. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crowd's streaming in, seats are being filled up, the track, the final preparation going on in this Arena Manawa 2 racetrack. Everyone's ready to go. You hear the buzz in the pits. You can see the cars being warmed up, starting to make your way towards the grids. The three uh, groups have been decided. Some drivers happy with their grids, some not, so they just want to make that top 26 show. It's almost go time here at Robertson Holden International Speedway for the Superstock Grand Prix. Waiting for Andrew McKeenan. We go green. First heat of qualifying. Charlene leans on Scotty Myers through the first bend. The eighth piece going to power away in the front. Sean Pearson gets pushed out wide, the 112 slots out again, and the two Joblins are finding their way through the field now. Lynham's gone round in the 99, but Williamson's up the wall as well in the 39. Now Myers, 1-2 Quinella, the 8B of Scott, leading the 88 of Young Jack. It's all on here, the first heat of qualifying. Both Myers just powering away, and Scott fires himself in, keeps the loud get a wide open. Hemi's on the infield there, spun up in turn one. It's Jamie Hemi in the tank. The two Myers, they come together. As Andy McCabe goes to the lead now. Charlin still in second. Great drive here from Ricky Dykstra, the 28 P car. In fourth, Jared Wade is up to fifth. Sean Pearson in sixth, the 1 1 2 C. Okay, Jacob McCabe out in front, three Myers. Scott Myers, and we go back to uh, Charlin, the 24 P. White flag this time for Andy McCabe, one to go for the 31 car. Just slots in front of Tim Ross again. Yeah, the best of Tim Ross. Hit a Jack Myers. He's a big bit of distance now back to Scott Wade. And Pearson, Charlotte's gone back to the sixth spot. And Andy McCabe will come across, take the win in the 31 P car. And hit a Jack Myers, Scott Myers, Jared Wade. Okay, the Colorado pace shoots off. Red group qualifying underway. Eulenberg getting a push from Daniel Hall and Thomas Stanaway will shoot into the lead. The hit of the 153 of Flynn Johnson. Daryl Wallace putting a bit of pressure on Dale Robertson there. Robertson's gonna slip into the second spot. Daniel Hall gets pushed up out of the way. The 371K going backwards to start the race off. Stanaway will lead it now. The 87B from Robertson in the 89 W. Quinn Johnson, oh, we got one round, that's Quinton Butcher. He's kept the clutch and he's hooked reverse and he was reversing it as they are spinning it. Stanaway still leading it from Robertson, Johnson, Daryl Wallace, Weir, Yellenberg in the 28. 58 of Way, uh, sorry, 58 of Roy Gard. Oh, one's up the wall, Kramer's got, uh, he's got Daniel Hole up the wall. Yes, it is. They clock up five laps. There's seven to go. 
first heat of red group qualifying. And it's Stanaway leading it. Rob Robinson back to Flynn Johnson. Leah Gilliburg, 28th in the fourth. Stephen Roygaard, Richard Hart. There's Adam Joplin leans on Roygaard and Hart. And they go into the wall. That allows Jaden Ward to slot through. One lap to go for Dale Robertson, the 89W. Stanaway's right in behind him. Got a way around him, but he can't find one. Blair Yellenberg's got third place sewn up. Look at that, we know that. He isn't advancing, he isn't going backwards either. Jaden Ward's holding off Stephen Roygaard and Benji Snedden. But Dale Robertson will come to the line to be a close one. And well, this looks here like Stanaway's got up on the ELS, but I think Robertson got it because looking at ELS. Dale Robertson's uh, transponder didn't register that last lap. So 40 years on, Clive Elliott's still racing out there. 40 years on, Jack's sitting up in the referee's box telling everyone what to do. And Jack's got a note <laughs> from his mum. That's it. <laughs> right, we're going green, Ron Ty. He missed that start. He's getting bumped everywhere, the 599 car. But no doubt about Graham Barr, he will go through to the lead, the 32B. Been on absolute fire this season in behind him. Your New Zealand champion Jason Long, new car this season as we see Jamie Hamilton ride the wall out of four and he collects the 37. Is he going to go up? Oh, that was so close, that one. Ron Ty's got piled up with Peter Rees. The bonnet's uh, been a bit crumbled on the 599. Still bar leading it though now from Long. Now Ty has a lap down in the 19. See O'Donnell gets fired off the end in the 69. Alderton's been fired off as well in the 218. So that opens third place up to Jamie Hamilton now in the 9G. And look at this, who's in fourth place? It's Clive Elliott, the 95P. Peter Rees is starting to catch the tail of the field now in the 2NZ. He's got the hammer down in that car. Harley Rob driving the former New Zealand title winning car of Melton Nato this season. White flag, one to go for Graham Barr. Jamie Hamilton sits in behind Malcolm Nato. A lot of pressure on Hamilton. One and two, Graham Barr will come out of two and four though and take. Blue group qualifying heat number one, 32P, your race winner from Jamie Hamilton in the nine. Jason Long, the one NZ, back to Asher Reeves in the 126. Clive Elliott manages to hold on for a fifth placing. And just like that, the Colorado U is off, the greens drop, and Melsop gets away. The 71 with a big punt there from Levine. Around the outside, Simon Joplin. Levine up the inside. Young Hemingway. Todd Hemingway goes with him in the 99. Jamie Hemi being slammed into the wall out of turn one and two. As has Ricky Dykstra. And once again, Ethan Reeves just not having the best night at the back of the field, the 127G. Things just are not going the way of Ethan Reeves tonight. Jack Myers just firing it through one hand in the corner, keeping the hand up to the Sun there in the 88 car. Simon Joblin leads it from Keegan Levine, Quinn Ryan, Shane Malsop, Gary Johnson. Scott Joblin now up into sixth spot. Johnson goes wide, the 52 from Stratford. And that's going to open the door for Wade and Sharp to go through. Oh, Dykes just up and over! Turn one. Right, so we've got six laps down, six to go. Simon Joblin, the leader, the three and Z in turn one, and he's not anymore as Keegan Levine shoots on by in the five dub. Quinn Ryan coming down the third. inside, he's going to claim it back. Oh, he is too. Joblin does claim it back off Levine. Quinn Ryan's looking up the inside of Levine. These could be vital points for Quinn Ryan, and he does get up the inside just in the five dub. The bumper goes back in from Levine. Pushes Ryan out wide. These are some vital points here for Quinn Ryan in the 46. Oh. As he's sitting right on that. Oh no, the 12's gone in. And Ryan had nowhere to go. 12 G in the way, he's struggling out to miss him. One to go now for Joblin. 
problem was, Brendan Kendall was right in the middle. He saw him in the last moment, swooped to the wall. Lost the time. Andy McCabe's in the wall. Andy McCabe in the wall. I don't know if Ethan Reeves was involved in it, but he's come off the infield, the 127. McCabe stopped, and Simon Joblin will pick up the win. Joblin will pick up the win ahead of Keegan Levine. Ahead of Scott Myers, Jared Wade, Quinn Ryan. Right, the U is off now. Underway we go. Awesome jump on the outside line from Josh Prentice, the 15W. Gets going there. The man who won King. Oh, we got one up already. Braden Robinson in the tank. The baking tray wing flops on over. And he's underway again, the 41G tank. Dale Robinson gets pushed a little bit to the infield now. Still on track. Kramer goes round in the 32. Josh Prentice flying out in front of the 15W ahead of the 471. 38 is in third. Then we go back to 95 in 98 from the bay. Blair Yellenberg soldiering through the 28S in Dorothy. Jaden Ward looking up the inside the 971. He's got Daryl Wallace behind him. They collect each other. Using his Christchurch teammate to sort of help him through those corners there, Jaden Ward. As Josh Prentice is just sitting nicely. In the lead there with three to go. He's got Benji Steadon in behind him. Then we go back to Zane Dykstra who's now under pressure from Alex Hill in the 95. Yulenberg now has slotted up another placing. Ward has put Gary Davison. Oh, Jaden Ward sacrificing a qualifying spot to put Gary Davison to the 971. One to go. In the meantime, for Josh Prentice ahead of Benji Sneddon. Bit of grass to get past Kramer there. But out in front though, Josh Prentice, the 15W, comes out of four and takes the checkered flag for heat two. He hit a snit in. It's a drag to the line that Dykstra will get the 38. Revs are high and we go green. Look at the wheel spin off the 54 car. Quirk tries to go right around the outside. Matty Wise is going to lean on a lot of them as he goes through. And here comes Peter Rees, the 2NZ. 18th in Heat 1, and he's already pushing his way through. Around the outside of Matty Wise. Foot to the floor is Rees. And into the lead, just like that, goes the 2NZ. Malcolm Nartai, a bit more conservative through the start than Rees. He's going through. Quirk's up the wall. So from the front row, Quirk. Up the wall and to the back of the field for the 51 car. Meanwhile, out in front, Peter Rees motoring away in the 2NZ car. Nartai and Matty Wise still battling it out there for that second spot. The 19C, the 136, even Humphrey in fourth. Oh. Asher Reeves just pushes James Marley out the way and that actually allows Jamie Hamilton up another place in two. Marley comes back on Hamilton. Oh, Bevan Humphrey gets spun up. Marley gives him a good punt. And Humphrey to the wall. There's problems there for the 54 car. And Asher Reeves gets fired off the end. The 126, he's got it right front gone. Peter Reeves will come around and have two laps to go this time. Malcolm Nartai still sitting in there in second, the 19C. 9G is in third. He slots up the inside of Nartai. So 9G into second ahead of the 19C, the 136B. We go back to the 58. Oh, sorry, Marley is there in the 99G as well. 58P of Peter Minkston amongst it. Jordan Deere in the 581, having a bit of run. White flag, one to go for Rees. Clive Elliott looking to try and get up the inside of Aaron Alderton out of Huntley. It could be a vital point for the 99, uh, 95. And Peter Rees will qualify. So Peter Rees will take the win. Peter Rees will take the win. Jamie Hamilton through into second. Malcolm Nartai. Look at the damage down here on the left-hand side. You guys can't see it up there in the grandstand, but there's a lot of panel damage to this 2NZ car. Peter Rees, second heat race, you had to come out with a big one, you did, you won it. 
tentatively. You're now tied with two other drivers, Jason Long and Clive Elliott on 35 points, and only two of you can go through to the top eight. Oh, nice. How's that work? Well, from what we've been told up in the box, it's either going to be a fastest lap scenario, so hopefully you've peeled off one of those fastest two times out of those three drivers. I don't really know. I don't know what they told you in the... <laughs> you do fast laps, Pete. But you still got a smile on your face. Oh, yeah, you know, it's pretty cutthroat out there, and everyone's pretty quick. So, you know, get to the front, can't do any more than that. Well, well let's hope that you've got straight through to the main show. A lot of damage here on this car, too, down on the left-hand side. Uh, yeah, I got hooked up with uh, Humphreys at the start, and Ron was on the other side of me, so that's the way it goes, isn't it, in the traffic. Jason. Three drivers tied on 35 points provisionally, which means that only two spots are left to go through to the top eight. You're one of those three that's on 35. I think it's coming down to a fastest lap scenario, so let's hope you've peeled off a good one. Uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult out there with the track being the way it is. Uh, there's no real racing line or anything, so I don't know. It's, we, we're not having too much luck so far, so yeah, we'll just wait and see, I guess. Talk us through the track conditions because it changed so quickly. Oh, it's just the, the tracks like at the start of the night was really soft for those first couple of races, and then now it's just underneath there, it's just rock hard and it's just gone black. So it's not just the track that you got to deal with; it's the dust in your eyes and all that as well. But um, yeah, it's and as the race goes on and, it, and the water dries out off it, it, it gets even worse. So I don't know. We'll try and adapt to it. It's the same for everyone and. Hopefully, um, yeah, we can get a bit more out of the car. I'm not sure where, where Ash has even gone. He's uh, hiding away somewhere. You can see them working on the front. If we have a look over here on the right-hand front, we can see the damage here to the right front setup when it took the wall. Look at the front bumper here as well. If you can come around, we'll see that. You can see how hard a hit he took to the right. On the outside here is that impact bar's been crushed. There's a piece of wood that goes in behind that, it's supposed to stop it crushing so much, but you can see how hard it was, that it has just completely flattened it on that right quarter. So a bit of an up and down night for the Rees family. Pete, he might have made it through. We know Ethan Rees had his problems. We certainly saw Asher have problems as well. It's not the best night for the Rees family, but they bounce back and they bounce back strong. Third and blue group, 58, Peter Bengston. Two solid races to go through to the main show. Yeah, no, uh, it was a bit hectic, eh? uh, you know, 25 cars, whatever, in our group. Um, you know, I didn't have flash. You know, I finished eighth and ninth and something like that. But I noticed the guys in the last heat, they finished behind me, so it gave me a pretty good chance, so I was quite lucky. What a great turnout, you know, what a 80 cars, what a great turnout for a GP. It? Yeah, well, I think it's great. It's a great time to be involved in superstock racing. Oh, brilliant from when we first started to now, like it's night and day and, and uh, you know, a little bit more money, but, uh, you know, it's great. It's great. you got a grid draw to come up later as well. Do you prefer to start up the front or nearer the back in the first heat race? Um, at the end of the day, is if we can get up the front, it is better, and towards the end, later in the you know, night, because uh, you probably lose three or four, five, six cars, so... You know, then you don't have to pass them at the end of the night. Right, back here at the 581 pit, Red Walker of Jordan Dare. Jordan doing some work here to the left rear. Yeah, track's gone pretty slick out there, so we're just trying to find some more drive and um, hopefully find some more speed because we're going to need it. We're in the repercharge charge and only two go through, so we're going to need a fast car. It's going to be cutthroat and you'll probably be a few rows back. Yeah, I mean, I think I just missed out on our group, so hopefully I'll be somewhere in the top ten. Hopefully an inside grid will be nice, so... Starting on the front row in the reaper charge, the 56 for Longanui, Kerry Pajerski. Grid two, but still a lot of work to do, only two cars are going to go through. Yeah, it's going to be hard, doesn't like it when it's slick like that, so we'll have to crash into them or something. <laughs> That's the good idea, I reckon, the old tank, it was going along well though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's going good now, got it sorted, just um, need to get a bit fitter I think. Yeah. Then put some tyres on it and it'll be a weight. The pace out there is just so fast. Oh yeah, it's just another level isn't it, but um, no, it's good. Yeah. We'll get there. 46 car, Quinn Ryan, strapping into the race car, getting ready for his rapid charge, starts on grid one. Quinn just talking to uh, Kerry Pajerski, the old man says he's going to turn left on you. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bring it on, it'll be good fun, eh? 
No, I'm, um, I think I'm off pole, so looking forward to it. We want to see another Hawks Bay car through to the top 26. Yeah, no, I'm hoping so. Yep, I'm off this front, so I'm going to give it everything I've got and, yeah, and just try and keep it under the radar and just keep, keep smooth laps and see how we go. And is this a case of deja vu? Is history repeating itself with Clive Elliott in the 95? 40 years ago when he won this event, he had to come through the rapid charge. Stranger things have happened in motorsport, and they certainly happen in Speedway. And Clive sitting in the seat, ready to go into battle once again. This is it, the last chance. It is rapid charge time, New Zealand Grand Prix. Two qualifiers, everyone else goes home. Anything goes in this one, David, it's all on here. They've got to do whatever they can to get over the line, first or second. It's all that matters. Whoever goes through out of this one, the two cars, they're going to end up doing six races tonight, David. Mm. She's going to be big night. There we are. The Ute's moving. Well, a couple of gaps, but two to qualify. It's the New Zealand Superstock GP Rapid Charge. Hayden Barker tried to pull out on that one. He got sent to the infield. Win Ryan, though, will lead it. Jordan Deere goes high. And look at this. Five million. The Silver Fox into second place. Majewski chasing Elliott. Here comes the 82. Up the inside now. So Quinn Ryan, your race leader from Clive Elliott. Kerry Pajewski in the tank. Elliott's got the foot down around the wall. Keeping it pinned in. Whoa, what a what slingshot he got. Slides it out again, Clive Elliott. So your top two still there. Kerry Pajewski's going to give it a whirl. No. Oh, he fires himself in and Jordan Deere collects him. As this pack battles for that third spot, Quinn Ryan and Clive Elliott just keep pulling away the 46 and the 95. A couple of trial rails out there that are very different to each other as well. Jordan Deere in third, Nartai is battling it out with Hamish Booker. We got halfway through the race. Six down, six to go. Quinn Ryan. No, he hasn't, but it does look like he's eased up just, just enough to maintain control. Clive Elliott dropping a little bit back. Jordan Deere is on the charge. I don't know about you, David, but I'm getting a little bit anxious watching Clive sitting in second with a very fast Jordan Deere coming in quick. He's coming in, he's making progress. Three to go. As Elliott goes a little bit wide that time. Run away. Behind the rest are just battling it out for the sake of a few laps. Win Ryan, two to go for the 46. Nothing's really happening. Jordan Deere is catching Elliott very quick. He'll know white flag this time around. And I think Jordan Deere will be close enough for a pounce on the last lap. White flag, one to go for Quinn Ryan. He's in the box seat. Clive Elliott, he's going to have to keep going because Jordan Deere's on a mission. He always hooks it sideways. He's got to be close enough for a pounce. Booker goes round. Keep an eye on the 95. Has Jordan Deere got enough to make a no, shot? No, no, no. Elliott's holding on. Quinn Ryan's got the win. Who's going to go through? Elliot. Clive Elliott. How good. The 1979 champion has qualified for the finals 40 years on. Pouring some water on the front of the car to keep it cool. They need to pour some on Clive as well. He's just unstrapping the belts. Pete Sloman's leaning in there, just giving him the congratulations. Clive, there's, there's a famous song by Split Ends, and it's called History Never Repeats. You've just blown that myth right out the back door. Oh, I don't know about that. There's a long way to go yet. Oh look, 40 years ago you had to come through a reaper charge. You've just done that again. But the shoe's on a different foot this time. There's more better cars and a lot faster and more better drivers probably. Did you look in the mirrors and see how fast Jordan Deere was coming? I did in the last two laps. <laughs> Quinn, you did it from pole position. Yeah. Great race, had good pace. Wasn't too much lap traffic to work with either. No, it was good. Um, the only problem is I didn't have a gear, gear stick the whole race. It snapped off um, on the dummy grid, so I had to bang it into gear. Um, so luckily it got into second off the line. Where there's a will, 
there's a way. <laughs> so it took a bit of effort, but yeah, I was, I was thankful that it, it clicked in, but I had to really give it a crack. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm thankful, but yeah, no, nah, we're going we're gonna to weld it up now and fix it. Qualifying's done. You got through. Doesn't matter how you did it. You're in the show. Yeah. Everyone's back to square one. Zero points, three heats. Yeah, yeah, no, it's nice to be in the final. Um, coming, coming to tonight with no expectations. Just um, first, you know, it's my first drive back in the car this season. So, yeah, fingers crossed to get some good grids and um, have a bit of luck and the old birds on my shoulder tonight. You see here on the 3NZ car is Simon Joblin. That they're just replacing or just refitting the right side wheel guard on that rear wheel. But they're just trying to line that back up. As always, not too much frantic activity going on here in the Joblin pit. We'll have a bit of a pit walk now and just, just take a look through. Looking forward to finding out what our grids are going to be as well. Some drivers prefer a front grid, some would rather go off the back. But the thing is, if you start off the front early and you have a rear grid later on, there's always drivers that have dropped out. So essentially, you've already made some places if you have a rear grid late in the night. Dale, have we got, a, have we got the grid sorted out yet? Uh, yeah, I think we got a 21.99, so um, yeah, happy enough with those. Just uh, got Josh Prentice here from Wellington next to me every race, so it's never a good thing when you got your club mates right next to you. Well, you've won it before, you certainly could do it again. Oh, I guess there's 26 cars going out that gate now, anyone's going to be a winner, so um, yeah, a lot of luck comes down to it, So, but we'll give it our best shot. Pete, you made the show, back to square one, everyone starts equal again. Yeah, we do, you're on to it. You've, you've done these meetings so many times, you know what it takes. Uh, yeah, well, we've had a practice now, so let's get into it. We're all talking about Clive Elliott right now, how cool is that? That's legend, yeah, I saw that, awesome. 40 years ago he went through a rapid charge and won the meeting. Oh yeah, shit, it'd be good for him, wouldn't it, if he did it? Right, Jason strapped in. Yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to put you on the spot, Stewie. Yeah. Right. Who's going to win it? Uh, who looked impressive out there? It's hard to say. I think uh, Keegan Levine's got a got a good bit of a uh, kit under his belt there, the 5W. Um, he showed a bit of signs out there in, uh, in qualifying. It's good to see the New Zealand champion out there, Jason Long. It's good to see Peter Ease out there too, NZ. Um, you know, could we see a dark horse like Clive come through 40 years on from a Rupert charge? Who knows? Do you know who is a, who's a pick for me for the podium? Josh Prendis. Yeah, Josh Prendis. He's, I mean, they, he's now the king of the arena, isn't he? He won the King of the Arena last weekend in the stock car class. He's here with his super stock. He's got a point to prove. He's wanting to get into the uh, Wildcats team, you know, and um, yes, he's going to try and run us over as well. So, you know, mate, Josh Prentice knows this place like the back of his hand. He's done many laps around here.
first heat of the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix Finals and 9G Jamie Hamilton comes out on top. Second to the Quinn Ryan, our Ripper Charge winner, 46B. Third, 44P, Brendan Sharland. Peter Rees, the 2NZ, comes home in fourth. Lee Yulenberg in the 28S in fifth. And top six placing there for the 471K of Benji Sneddon. Straight into it with the water buckets and things like that, just cooling down these race cars. The Leach Motorsport number nine, racing out of Gisborne this year, Jamie Hamilton. Mate, job done in heat number one from grid eight. Yeah, I'm pretty heavy with that. Uh, it's a pretty good start. We uh, qualified real good. I haven't raced here for a few years, so I took a bit to get in the groove, but yeah, going good. You've had to travel a long way for this medium because you're still based down in Christchurch, aren't you? Uh, not really. We've been flying back and forth, so yeah. Uh, we leave the car at Pete Reeses. He's looked after us a lot. And uh, up in Gisborne, one of my sponsors up there, Stephen McCafferty. So yeah, it's been good. Lots of people helping us out to come race up here. Yeah. Well, I know we've talked with the 95P of Clive Elliott a few times tonight already, and we're back in here in the pit, but for a different reason this time. Clive, you can totally blame me for that incident, because I straight away posted on Facebook that you'd just made it through and history was repeating itself. I just commentator cursed you. Shame on you. <laughs> Never mind. We'll go out in the other two heats and see what we can do. The cool thing is that you're always smiling. Well, what's not to smile about? <laughs> Heat one, Quinn, good drive for you, big points. Yeah, no, I'm stoked, eh? Stoked. Um, car went really well. It um, seems to be set up really well for a slick track tonight, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, no, the boys are great. Um, they definitely um, help out a lot, and um, yeah, it's car's going really well tonight, and um, yeah, I really appreciate their help because it, it, all, it all comes down to how it goes out on the track. A good first heat for you. You made some big gains, come from a long way back to get some big points. That's what we want, eh? Yeah. Track was pretty good actually. Just 15 lappers? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, I felt that. that. That's why you're sweating a bit more? <laughs> oh, man, foot probably. <laughs> the, the thing with you, Pete, just when it looks like you're missing out on a championship or even getting in the show, all of a sudden you're in with a chance of the championship. Oh, a long way to go, you know, but oh, yeah, I'm, there is. I'm glad I made the top, top group and uh, we'll see what happens. How much do these tyres grow on a slick track like this as they heat up? Uh, if you've got your setup right, probably three to four pounds each. If you set up wrong, you can grow that one eight or nine. And that's a massive difference, and that changes the gearing in the race car at the same time. Yeah, I don't think they actually grow, they just put air in them. But it all changes the gearing.
the 2NZ comes home with the win from the 87B of Thomas Stanaway. Keegan Levine, the 5W, picks up a third placing. 58K, Stefan Roygaard in fourth. 9G, Jamie Hamilton in fifth. And sixth goes to the 15W of Josh Prentice. Well, if we look at our points after heat two, the 9G of Jamie Hamilton is top on points, 49 points. He will start heat three from grid 12. 2NZ Peter Rees on 48 points, just one point off Hamilton. He starts on grid 23 for the final. Then we got a massive, a massive nine points back to Keegan Levine, the 5W, and Quinn Ryan, the 46B. They're both on 39 points. Now Keegan starts off grid 17 and Quinn off grid 22. A further point back, 15W, Josh Prentice. He's on 38 points and starts off grid 11. And the 1NZ Jason Long still on the podium chance there. Uh, 36 points starts off grid two for heat three. We've got the one NZ here at Jason Long. Jason, you're in there fighting for this championship. You got 36 points, currently sixth in the points uh, table, but you got the best of the grids of everybody with that third heat race grid two for you. Yeah, I've um, we, as I said earlier, we struggled with the car so far, but we're slowly getting there and um, finding find a little pace in it. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know, we'll just go out there and give it a shot and hopefully there might be a bit of carnage with the other boys and I can stay out of it, but you never hold your breath going into these ones, you just get out there and do the best you can and see what happens. So is the track slickening off, is the setup coming back to the 1NZ? Uh, no, nah, we, we're pretty good, first part of the race and mid-race and then the car's sort of going off for the last few laps, but by then it's pretty tough to pass anyway, so we're, we're pretty happy with the, where we're at now, so... We'll just give it a run in this last one and see how we go. Pete, I know I've talked to you a lot already today. You're still in here fighting for this title. You're now the top point scorer after two heats. Oh, nice. Good place to be, eh? You got one point in front of Jamie in the 9G car. Oh, sweet. Good old, good old Gisborne. <laughs> do, you, do you want to know your grid? Do you know what it is already? Oh, or, or, well, there you are down yeah, here. You're coming uh, from grid 23. 23. You've done it before. Sweet. Well, here we go. So hopefully with this third heat race coming up, there might be a couple more cars that drop out and that's already points gained for you. Yeah, that's true, so we'll see what happens, eh? Let's have a look see what a driver does to prep for their next race, especially tear-offs, so vital in Speedway. If we can just have a look around the side here and you'll get an idea. How many tear-offs you run in a race? Uh, I've been running about five, because it's not really that muddy out there. In the first one I used them all, but in that one I only used about two, so yeah, it's not much mud flying around. That was a massive race. Grid 21 to 5th place. You're only a point behind Pete. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close and I think I've got a better grid than Pete in this one, but... Yeah, grid 12. Yeah, so as long as I can get away, hopefully I can just hold that position and see what happens. You're a superstar out there at the moment. You're third on points going into the last race. Yeah, I didn't expect that at all, actually. I, had a pr I got spun out in the first one and uh, I was lucky to just um, finish that race. Uh, I think I only finished 13th or 12th, so oh, a bit of a surprise, but hey just shows the quality and the speed of the cars out there, eh? And I mean, a 13th and a 3rd can, can give you 3rd on points going to the last race and I'm not going to complain. <laughs> grid 17, that's a big task. Yeah, I don't even know my grid, thanks for telling me. Oh. <laughs> I've just uh, ruined it for you? Yeah, look, hey, 3rd heats of um, championships, I mean, half of the, you know, you don't know who's going to do what and it's it's uh, generally only, you know, 10 cars are going for it and then the rest are trying to trying to do the dummy. So, um, yeah, I mean, 17's not too bad, and I'll just uh, just go go and see what happens, I suppose. We'll let you do a bit of a sponsor plug too, eh? 
Oh shit! Yeah, I got got a few. Uh, couldn't couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but yeah, just a special thanks to uh, mum and dad. Obviously, ones in the top ten. I mean, they fund the car, and and without them, obviously, I wouldn't be here. And the likes of uh, Lama Engineering, he does all our motors, and Mark, you know, he looks after us real well. So uh, Jake Baker paints all the cars and all that, so making them look top notch, as you see the new kit this weekend. So now nah, looking bloody awesome. But yeah, hey, I can't think of uh, every sponsor off the top of my head, but uh, the rest of them, hey, thanks for everything you do, and um, yeah, no nah, good. You heard it here folks, if Peter Rees does win the title, he picks up the Grand Slam. That is the New Zealand Super Slot title, the North Islands, the Grand Prix, the 240s, and we are going green. Heat 3 underway, and look at that, as we see the smooth crowd here. But 52p, Scott Joblin was the man that came away with the win from the 1NZ of Jason Long. Keegan Levine in the 5W picks up another third placing. Josh Prentice in the 15W comes home in fourth. And Quinn Ryan in fifth, the 46p. And Zane Dykstra, the 38p, comes home in sixth. Well, there we have it. After that very entertaining third heat, the results are in. 
we have ourselves a runoff. That's right, the, another runoff for a title. Keegan Levine, 5W, 2NZ, Peter Rees, tied at the top on 63 points. They will run off for the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix title. But wait, four cars, that's right, four cars. 46B, Quinn Ryan, 15W, Josh Prentiss, 9G, Jamie Hamilton, 1NZ, Jason Long. Four cars tied on 61 points. Only one can stand on the podium. We have ourselves a four-car runoff. Keegan, provisionally a runoff for the title with Peter Rees. Oh, pretty happy. Um, bring it on. <laughs> that was a torrid third heat race, only 15 cars finished. Yeah, no, it was pretty hectic, eh? Uh, just lucky that um, I don't have to come up to any uh, block cars. And, yeah, I just ran a smooth race. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy. So, hey, let's, let's go. <laughs> You're still in this fighting, mate. It could be just, just four laps away from a Grand Prix debut title for you. Yeah, pretty exciting, eh? But, hey, top three um, guaranteed. So uh, what happens now? Who cares? Top three. Yeah, so it's confirmed there. It's not only the runoff for you for first and second. We've got a four-way runoff for third place. That's how tight this championship was. Uh, it's been a good night, eh? And uh, just happy for Josh Prentice to rip in the dub, and he's in the runoff for, for third. So, hey, mean. Pete, Yo. you're still in it. Oh no! Shit, I thought oh, we got rid of that race. I'm gonna have a beer now. Nah, run off. <laughs> you, you had some attention paid to you in that race. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, good on them. The home track, they're looking after, eh? It's a, it's a compliment, isn't it? It is. I enjoyed that race. Loved it. Good test for the car too. So just four laps away from perhaps your first GP crown. Oh yeah, first or second we're gonna get. Doesn't really matter what, does it? Oh, come on, just quietly, you know you want that number one spot. Oh, it'd be great. You yeah, don't get me wrong. But hey, Keegan's uh, well deserved of it too, so best of luck to him. That's yep. Good. You didn't get the crown, but you still got a chance of a podium. Yeah, well, I, I thought I was out of it, so I sort of just started getting some paybacks pretty quick. But yeah, I've still got a shot at third, so go out and have this runoff. Definitely some good cars we're against, so I've actually got no reverse either, but hopefully I won't need that. Well, you were, you were backwards at one stage in that race, fought your way back up through. Yeah, 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 no, off the start I almost got spun, so it was a real, it was a tricky race, but heaps of fun. Well, after all the hard work of tonight with your efforts and heats one and two, you definitely want to go home with a cup and a sash. Oh, I would love to, yeah, I'd love to, but it's, gonna, it's probably going to be one of the harder races of the whole night, really, just four of us going at it, so, yeah, go out and give it a shot. Well, you just see Quinn Ryan jumping into the trade zone car. 46. Still got a chance of a top three. Four car runoff. Never seen that. That's going to be something else. Good luck to the Bay. Just watch as he prepares there. Straps on the clips in together the five piece harness. And um, let's let's just photo let's just cruise on in here with the gear stick and have a look at that. Can you see what it is? You heard him say early on that he broke the gear stick and he did that first heat race set of ice grips. How about that? That's innovation at its finest. That's a BJ's Bakery and Cafe special. That four car runoff involving Jason Long, former GP champion, Josh Prentice, who I picked to be on the podium tonight. We'll have to wait and see if he comes in for that. Quinn Ryan and Jamie Hamilton, who we just talked to as well. Four cars and a runoff. I, I honestly, 22 years of commentating, I don't think I've ever seen that. Can't wait. Here we go, four car runoff for third. It looks like it looks like they're trying to figure out where they're starting. Hang on a minute. Josh Prentice on pole. Jason Long from two. Quinn Ryan from three. And Jamie Hamilton from four. Only one car to stand on the podium. Here we go, four car runoff. Long pushing Brendis to the infield. So Long, yeah, we're going to set the back out of that. Long's going to drag race Hamilton. Hamilton, we know, has the speed. Oh, look at this. Long pushes Hamilton wide. I thought Brendis was about to take a dive. Quinn Ryan with a big punt on Josh Brendis. He takes Brendis to the wall. Doesn't work. Now Long's on the defense. 
Hamilton goes through. Josh Brinkus is going to open the door. He takes a shot at Hamilton. So Hamilton, Brown. It's a three-car race now. Three-car race, and Brinkus now is going to play the defence. It's the Hawkeyes versus Josh Brinkus. Pretty's on off. Pretty puts long in, and he keeps it straight. The 15W keeps it straight. Good run now. Oh, Hamilton. Hamilton's going to start running as well. They're spread out now. Long's going to stop and wait. So Long will stop and wait. That will stop. Yep, see? Well, Hamilton knows it's not for him. White flag, one to go. And Long will guide Quinn Bryan to the checker. Josh Prentice, he almost took the wall on his own. And Jason Long guides Quinn Ryan to the chicken flag. So Quinn Ryan will finish up third at the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. This is it, the runoff for the title. Peter Rees starting from the bowl position. Keegan Levine in the 5W. Starting from grid position two. Winner takes the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix, the first national title of the season for the Superstock class. Here we go. Revs are high, and the greens drop. Reeves gets a jump on Levine and goes to the lead. Levine's going to drive Jackson down. He's going to get better too, and he smokes him. Reeves is sideways. Levine's facing the right way, and Levine's off the ball. Keegan Levine, off and gone, the 5W. Rees has spun around now. They have to keep moving. Rees cannot stop, physically stop. He has to keep moving. Keegan Levine clocks up his first lap. Rees will have a couple of shots now, and Levine can just sit behind him. champion. Sorry the Grand Prix, that's how excited I am. Reese has got one corner to get him. Levine knows they both have to keep going. Reese gets it sideways. Keegan Levine, the New Zealand Superstar Grand Prix champion. The Hutt Park team, the Hutt Park team will be loving this. Right, catching up with our third place here at the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix, uh, albeit after a four-car runoff. Quinn Ryan, Quinn mate, uh, three consistent races. Saw you uh, sneak through to a nice uh, three or well, four-car runoff for third. Uh, that's something a bit different. Yeah, no, it was a different experience. It was pretty busy out there. Eh? It was um, yeah, something different. I'm um, lining up there with three other good cars, obviously. So it was, I was actually quite happy that I got a back grid, so I could just sit back for a few laps and see what was going on. And um, yeah, me and Jace were just going to work together and. Hopefully get one of us home and yeah, it worked out really well. For you, how did you find the uh, the racing and, and the car going for those three heats? Because this is a nice new engine in it for this year that Chad Ace has been running for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, it's actually my first night in the car. I've been away, been away yep. up in Auckland working, um, so can't can't complain with the night at all. Um, had a real shit first race um, when it was real wet, um, but then got got it back together in the second race, um, and obviously just missed out on qualifying, and then yeah, started on pole on the ripper charge and come away with the win to get in, which was awesome. Um, had a second placing in the first first final heat, um, and then I started on 19 in the second race and got um, I think I got like 13th yeah, I think. Like that, yep. um, and yeah, I didn't realise I was still on points scan until the last race, and then I just pinned my ears back and Went yeah, here it. we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that runoff. Let's quickly go to the runoff though, because the runoff uh, we saw Josh Prentice, he spun up Jamie Hamilton. And then got to the lead. It was obviously all of a sudden it was a Hawkeyes versus a, a potential Wildcat race. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Josh Prentice took Jason Long out. 
He was on a mission, wasn't he? Yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was definitely interesting. Like, I just, it was nice having a couple of cars tussling in front of me because yep. I knew at some point that something was going to happen there. So, um, yeah, it was just, um, I was literally just having dives at all the other cars <laughs> apart from Jace. But, um, you know, it worked out well. I see Prentice took him to the wall and I just shot, shot straight through and got a little bit of a gap. It was good. All right, uh, we're catching up with our runner-up from the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix, 2NZ, finishing second, Peter Rees. <laughs> Mate, you're sweating. That was hard work out there tonight, was it? You have no idea. You know, those uh, those early two races, and I got off to a real bad one, didn't I? And I was a yep. lap down. I didn't think I'd even get near the end of the point. And then, yeah, after that final, I enjoyed that final, I must say. You know, the demise on me, I actually enjoyed that. That'll be the first, one of the first times that really, you'd really had demise really on you, eh? Oh, hey, they looking after their home track, yeah. you know. So, so uh, yeah, I really enjoy that. So I appreciate them doing that, and I'll go shake their hand shortly. But, uh, yeah, I didn't expect to get this far. And second, I'll take second. You know, everyone says I'm hungry for that first, but I'm not in this stage of my career. What about the, uh, we'll touch on it quickly, what about the Grand Slam, though? It wasn't just the, the Grand Prix that got away, it was the Grand Slam that got away. Yeah, but that's just an invented word, isn't it? I mean, I've got nothing to prove. I just enjoy that racing. You know, to get that far as a bonus, not quite right there. If I got it, I'd be happy, but I'm still happy. In that note, Keegan Levine, you, you, you're full of credit tonight, so I'm, I'm going to roll with it. Keegan Levine, what an awesome runoff that was, eh? He, yeah, he, uh, he got you twice. He did, and, uh, you know, he got me good, so I wait. And, and entertains the crowd. Yeah. And I'm sure they were entertained. And he's a popular person, you know, good on him. I was the first to meet him over there because he came come back in. We said it before the uh, third heat. You've been a man who's gone out and won third heats. You've been a man that's gone and decided who wins third heats. So to you, it swings and roundabouts, doesn't it? It does, and that's how I've got my championship titles to date. Uh, you know, I've earned them the respect. And I, and I think at this end of it, you know, because I've moved away from Palmy, people are like, oh, the Mize and that, like, we're not going to let him have it. And that's cool. I love it. Hey, that's what, that's, that's what we've got bumpers for. And super stocks are starting to use bumpers, if you see. Well, it's been a pretty, pretty big first start of the season, hasn't it? It has. I mean, the car's are nine millions old and it looks really second end. Yeah. All in all, Pete, a good night though, a good result, and um, we'll see you at the next meeting. And uh, hey, if, as long as the entertainment provides, I'm sure you'll be enjoying it. Oh, I love it. You have no idea. I was laughing the whole last uh, seat. <laughs> love it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, catching up with our New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix winner, Keegan Levine. Keegan, mate, you had an absolute shocker of a first race. Uh, spun to the rear of the field, finished up 13th, came back with two solid second placings. Let's talk us a little bit firstly through those uh, through, through, through heats. Yeah, well, I don't know, just the, the first one was a bit of a shocker, really. Um, I didn't expect this at all, to be fair. Normally, um, a 13th place in a, in a field like this... Uh, is uh, not the not the best finish, but hey, it just shows the speed and the quality of the cars. Eh? I mean, a thirteenth, and uh, you can still take out a title. So, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, just pretty happy. The last heat at one stage, there was five of you guys tied for first. Then all of a sudden, uh, we we lost Simon Joblin, and that basically opened it up for you. You were solely out in front on sixty three. Pete Reeves though managed to make his way back up. He finished on sixty three. Then you heard you had a runoff. What was the thoughts going through your mind then? Yeah, well, I saw Pete and uh, Hamilton, they were getting a bit of attention, so um, I knew that me and, uh, I thought, was hoping that me and Prinny might have come out 1-2, because I knew that I was a point separating us, so I just had to pass him, and I thought we had done enough for 1-2, but hey, still pretty happy, and Josh, awesome effort, man. For, against two Hawks Bay cars to still finish second, only a couple of car lengths behind, it's top effort, so big things to come for Wellington. You went out against Peter Rees, the man who, he's done run offs galore, he's uh, experienced at this. He didn't just want to win the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. Peter Rees wanted to win the Grand Slam. There was a lot riding on him. There was nothing riding on you. What was your feeling going into that runoff? Yeah, I, just, I was just going to do anything to win it, really. I was just more thinking having GP in the stock car and Superstock at the same time was the only thought running through my mind. So, yeah, I was just pretty happy, eh? And, um, yeah, what else can you say? <laughs> there you go, Keegan Levine, your New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix champion. Come on, give him a round of applause, everyone!